Hey guys, welcome, welcome to the, the little masterclass I, I decided to put on around empaths and energy workers and how Qigong can really be a way that they can work with being an energy worker and the demands that being an energy worker takes and with the demands of just being an empath, right? And empaths are going to understand what that's like. Now, guys, just a little bit of housekeeping as we jump into the room. First of all, if you can make sure your microphones are off. That would be great. We will have time for questions and answers right at the end of the evening. But for right now, of course, if you've got kids crash tackling each other in the background or husbands complaining as they search through the fridge looking for whatever they're looking for, if you could just switch your microphones off, that would be uh, amazing and, and stop any sound coming in through onto the recording. Of course, we can switch the microphones on later if you have a question. Other thing is, guys... If you're hiding off there in the background with your cameras off, we're in a class around empaths. It's really nice if you could show your face and be present. I feed off what you guys put in. If everyone's sitting there kind of going, oh, oh, just check my messages, oh, no, just, just go and do this, then there's a good chance that I'll be standing on this side going, oh, right, because I feed off you guys. So, the more you guys put in, you know, if I'm like, yeah, talk and get your hands up, get your hands up, write something in the chat, do some comments. It's always really good for me to be able to see what you guys are doing and, and it just feeds me being here. I am, after all, a little empath and I'm an energy worker. It's kind of why I'm putting on this little talk because I know what that's like. I know both sides of this coin and I also know how... Qigong has worked with me over the years. I mean, I started acupuncture when I was quite young, in my early 20s. You know, I started giving treatments and going to clinic. And I really understand how demanding being an energy worker is and, and constantly giving and that constantly working with clients and giving and giving and giving. And, and the difference between myself and a few of the other practitioners I worked in the clinic with and really watching how they didn't really cope with big, long days in clinic. They, they didn't have the stamina. There was something else happening there. And after years of being in clinic and after years of training in Qigong and Tai Chi, I've really come to understand how impressive Qigong can be and how much of a way Qigong can actually change us and help us to really fortify ourselves. So in this masterclass, what I'd really like to do is just talk around the theory around Qigong and around how our body builds, stores, and purifies our energy and the process we go through and how Qigong can really facilitate that. So I see some similar faces. We've got a Nina in the room. We've got a Donna. Hello, Donna. I can't see everyone's name. They don't always come up. We've got a Mr. Lee off there in the background. That must be uh, a Nicolette in there as well. She always hides off there in the dark and we've got a Kristen. So hi guys. And also if you are here and you're watching the replay, because there's a lot of you who were, um, oh, hi Jem, how are you? <laughs> right. Um, uh, there's a lot of people here coming through into the replay. So if that's you and you're here with the replay, hello, play along. When we get up and we do the exercise and stuff like that, jump up, join in. It'll make it much more of an, uh, a functional and practical training for you that way. And if you are here as one of the replays, guys, write in the comments below, hashtag replay. It's really interesting for me to see who comes back, who watches these, who gets involved. And when we message or we chat on Facebook, I'm like, oh, this person's really engaged in what I'm doing, you know? Like what's going on with them? And I'll, I'll have a bit more of a chat and I'll open up because I can see that you're really interested in what I'm doing. So if you are here for the replay, hashtag replay in the comments below, that would be absolutely amazing. So guys, what are we going to do tonight? That's a really good question. I've been asking myself that all day. You guys know that when I sat down to write this, I said, I'm going to write this PDF. And some of you might be here for that. And I sat down to write the PDF and I went, I know what I want to say, but it's like a little bit of this and it's a bit of that. And I want to pull this around. And I want to pull this over from here. And, I, and, and for me, it's so holistic, this principle, that when I sat down to write it, my writing skills, which aren't bad. And, and I know a lot of you actually offered to help me. So thank you so very much. My writing skills aren't that bad. It was just really tricky for me to articulate how I wanted to piece this together. So this is why I just thought to myself, well, you know what? 
I love to talk. I don't mind a good chat. So why don't I just do this as a Facebook masterclass and just weave my way through the content and see how I go and then look back on that and go, yeah, actually, I should probably talk about this here and I should probably talk about that here. So guys, you're on a little adventure with me tonight. So is it okay if we go on this little adventure together and that sometimes I'll be kind of going, oh yeah, and I'll be backtracking a little bit and I'll probably be going through my flippy board backwards and forwards and pulling in all sorts of information from all over the place. But that's kind of how holistic medicine goes. It's not just A, B, C, D all the way through the alphabet. We kind of have to make some jumps every now and again with theory to understand and piece things together. And of course, this is a reasonably kind of delicate little topic. It's interesting. And, and when I was sitting there thinking about this today, I really had to realize that energy workers and empaths, they have similarities. And, and, and I'll talk around that and, and the reason why I believe that to be so. And But definitely not all empaths are energy workers and definitely not all energy workers are empaths. So what's going on there and, and how's that working? So I want to be a little careful how I dance around this because, of course, with empaths, we are quite sensitive beings, aren't we? Guys, if you're an empath, are we quite sensitive beings, right? And that's really what makes up a large part of being an empath is that sensitivity and how that plays out in different areas of our life. And this is how we're really quite similar to energy workers because energy workers, of course, want to be really sensitive so they can feel energy, be receptive to energy, shift energy, share energy, and all these kind of things. So being sensitive is the big thing that is actually really important for both empaths and energy workers. Now, for empaths, one of the problems is this sensitivity can become quite overbearing. It can be something that's difficult to control. It can be something that we think we have under control and then something can come out of left field and just knock us over because of that sensitivity. So really the question is that I want to dive into tonight is how can Qigong fortify our systems? How can it work with this sensitivity? Because of course, if you're anything like me, and I believe you guys probably will be, empathy is actually a really nice thing, right? Like let, let's look at some of the things that empaths might go through. First of all, it's really sensitive, right? Who's ever sat there and thought this sensitivity could be a blessing? Maybe it's a curse. Not quite sure sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's like, Gem. it's like, oh, you know, it, it's really nice to be this sensitive, but at the same time, there's other times when I, I wish I couldn't be. So how do I switch that off? Or how do I maintain that? Or how do I even fill myself up after that event has passed? This is the kind of thing we're going to be looking at of how Qigong can really show you the way to do this. So, being so sensitive, empaths are really sensitive to subtle shifts in energy. Yeah, just little subtle shifts that happen. They can be environmental shifts. They can be shifts within someone's demeanor. It can be small mannerisms. It can be something that the, the, the just about them, their energy that has shifted. And empaths can really be responsive to that. And so when you're that responsive to things, it can be really tricky to try and maintain ourselves and work within that. So that's something we're going to be looking at. One of the other kind of shared things between energy workers and empaths can be a little bit of boundary challenges. It goes with being an empath, right? We either we either let our boundaries too much for for you know for a good cause, but but that allows our energy to to be taken and get used by other people. Or our boundaries can just be weak where people just come in and annihilate us and just take what they want and, you know, just pillage us to the bone and then, and then leave and then leave and leave us empty and deflated and feeling lost, right? The other thing is, who is an empath here absorbs emotions? Anyone here find, yeah, yeah, right? So you're just in an area and you just start to take on those emotions. So what's going on there? Qigong has a really nice way of helping you understand why that's probably happening for you. And also I can give you some tools to look at how you can strengthen and build your resistance and start to switch that off. Another thing for empaths, big one, conflict avoidance. Because empaths are so sensitive and they take on the energy of other people, they absorb those emotions, they have those boundary challenges. Sometimes empaths will get caught in not really asserting themselves as much as they probably should. 
just simply because they want to avoid having their energy taken, having someone blind side and knock them over or having those really difficult conversations because they're so easily affected by energy. They will generally stay away from that. And that's not always as advantageous as it sounds because as you know, it can really set you up for difficulties either at that time or further down the track with those boundaries and and, and that and that conflict not being resolved right so we're going to look at potentially how qigong can help us in that regard now the other thing that empaths and and again i'm putting my hand up for all of these because i i know exactly what these are like is resisting the negative tide like whether that be social media the news gossip by friends stuff that happens at work stuff that's happening politically, religiously around the world, that tide of negativity that just keeps washing against us every day. And with social media, right, it's in our face 24-7. And so how can Qigong help us with that? Now, within all of that, empaths all get caught under their own weight, right? With all this other stuff going on, with all this stuff going on, they get caught under the own weight of what, what I've read and the term, and I don't know if I like the term, but I'm going to use it anyway, like this empathic burden of being like, God, why am I just taking on all this stuff? You know, and you walk around. Has anyone felt like they're just walking, dragging their knuckles on the ground? You know, they're just like, my God, I've just been blindsided and just, just given out so much this week, this month, this year, that I've just got nothing left. And it's just like the own weight of your existence. It really ties into that feeling, whether it's a blessing or a curse. And we just get overwhelmed by life. And I mean, that can be even in some really positive situations, right? When you're tired, you could be at a wedding, you could be at a function, you could be anywhere. And it's just so loud, so noisy, so much going on that there's just so much energy there that, right, you can't take it all on. And, and it starts to get extremely tiring. Okay. So we're going to look at that. And of course, the end product of all that can be a little bit of solitude, right? Which is fantastic when you're like that, but also easy to get addicted to and easy to really shut yourself down and start switching yourself off from the outside world. Because of course, with all those emotions, with the lack of boundaries, with avoiding conflicts and having the situations that come out of them, with that tide of news and negativity just coming from the world, that overwhelm, right? One of the big things we suffer is fatigue. Just fatigue. That feeling every day waking up, oh my God, I've got to go again. Oh my God, I've got to do this again. Oh my God, again. Oh my God, again. Like it just keeps happening. And so as that happens, we just get that fatigue and we get those ups and downs, those emotional ups and downs. Now, that's great. If we've got some really positive energy in our life, maybe we're up for a little while, but then maybe that tide changes. And being an empath, because we've got such sensitivity, we're going to pick up on that change and we're going to go down. And so we're constantly going on this roller coaster through life of up and down. And I don't know about you, but when I'm kind of on that plain keel, when I'm not going up and down so much, I just feel like I have so much more control of my life. Do other people feel that? Do other people understand what that's like? You know, that, that roller coaster ride. Yeah. And how much it is, you know, nicer in life, just to have a little bit more of a flat plane, you know, other than those really big high extremes. Now, being a natural, uh, sorry, being a, being a uh, empath also means that, you know, we, we can attract abusers. Anyone, anyone, because empaths can have that really caring nature, that really giving nature, be super compassionate, have a really big heart. Of course, they really easily attract people who are energy vampires, right? The narcissists, the people who want to take that energy. And so that's a really good thing that we can talk a little bit about tonight and just some really nice little cheats around that about working with, with the body's energy. So if I forget to mention that, guys, I want you to remind me by the end of the evening, Lee. How are you there, brother? All the way over there at the UK, mate. Nice to see you. We got someone from the UK. We got Liam from the UK. I trained with Lee a little while ago on some Kung Fu. He's, he's an absolute animal. I love him to pieces. And we actually have a Nina here as well from Paris. So, guys, we got a couple of Perthians. We got a couple of Gold Coast. It's great. Awesome. Anyway, I digress. What was I talking about? So, this empathic ability where we attract people in our lives who want to steal our energy because we don't have great boundaries. And those people are opportunists, right? They're going to see that. They're going to steal and take that from us. So how can Qigong really help us fortify our energy, build up our boundaries, keep our center, hold our grounding through those times? Now, of course, we can get super defensive with all this kind of stuff going on. And one of the things that 
really plays up for a lot of empaths after conversations I've had is they really find their performance suffers. Does anyone find their performance suffers when they're, when they're really low, when they're tired? Yeah. And it's hard to really kind of keep going, pick yourselves up, especially if you've got someone nagging away at you or, or, or your energy is just scattered everywhere because it's going a million different areas. Right. So we want to kind of look at how we can keep our performance up. And really, at the end of the day, what this really means is that children, families, our friends, our co-workers, they don't really get the best of us. When we're that tired, when we're that fatigued, maybe when we're a little bit defensive, when we're going up and down, our children, our friends, and our family, they just really want the best, best of us. So what I want to look at tonight is some of the Chinese theory, some of the ideas around that, and some really basic practices just to help us understand how Qigong can start working in our lives at a really simple foundational level. Okay, Because if you are any of these things and you resonate with any of these concepts around what it is to be an empath, what it is to be an energy worker, because let's face it, right, when I'm talking about these things, I'm talking about the daily life of an energy worker. You know, they get two, three, four treatments done and they've just had clients just tell them all the nastiest stuff that's happening in their life. They've just given a bunch of energy, whether it be massage, acupuncture, body work or anything like that. It's just hard. It's just hard. And we get home and we don't have enough energy to share out with the people who, who really deserve our energy, with the people who care about us. So we want to take a look at that because what it really means if you do feel any of these is that you're a really deeply caring person. And that's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing broken. You're probably deeply responsible, which is why you offer so much of yourself. You're probably really loyal, which is why you keep offering that part of yourself. You're probably really open, authentic. And so you wear your heart in your sleeve. And you just want to be able to give that much love. You just want to be able to give that much help to people around you. I understand. It's a beautiful thing. Empaths and energy workers have great big hearts. But sometimes we just need to learn to fill them. Sometimes we just need to learn to fill ourselves. And Qigong is really a way that we can learn to forgive, to fill ourselves. begin using our energy, begin filling our energy up, begin building our body, building our resilience. So that's what we really want to focus on tonight. Does that sound good? Does that sound like, does that, does that hit a chord with some people? People are like, yep, that kind of sounds like me. Yeah, a couple of people. Nice. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. All right. So let's have a little look at what we're talking about here. Now, one of the analogies I use, and I searched through all my drawers and I used to have balloons, but I couldn't find any of the balloons. I think they've all died and, and gone to balloon heaven. But I have an old glove here. Just have a new line around the house from the last time I explained this, right? And I really like the gloves. I really like the, the balloon material because I think it's a great analogy for the human body. And we're looking at the skin. And now in China... The quality of a healthy body is, whilst it's fit, a lot like we have in the West and we want to be nice and fit. The other things that we want within our body is to be soft, relaxed, but firm with a level of density. We want to have flex... Oh, my glove just ripped. Wouldn't you believe it? We want flexibility. Oh, my glove. It almost didn't last. It should be all right. I should be able to make it work, right? So it's nice and flexible. The gl this glove is not flexible at all. What's going on here? All right, I'm going to have to use my hand to complete. It was like up on a cupboard somewhere that's been resting up there for a year since, since I used to do this talk a long time ago. That was, that was awesomely rehearsed. So, right, the balloon skin of the glove is nice and flexible. It's nice and stretchy, okay? But the glove itself won't hold itself open unless there is enough internal pressure. And so the glove will be all just limp. 
and there's no pressure inside the balloon. There's no pressure inside the glove. And so the balloon doesn't have the openness, the form, the shape or the frame to remain nice and open. Now, if the balloon's nice and open, it floats through the air and it just bounces off things nicely, right? If it comes into contact with the board, it just bounces off. If it comes into contact with things, it just bounces off and floats through space quite nicely. This balloon is full. It's a happy balloon. It's the kind of balloon you want to give to kids at a birthday party because it's a nice, happy balloon. But then you've got the other type of balloon. And this type of balloon doesn't have any pressure on the inside. This type of balloon is limp. It's deflated. It doesn't have the internal pressure to keep it nice and open. So when it hits things, it just kind of smushes into them. It doesn't bounce off. It doesn't have that resilience to go back and keep floating. The balloon is just limp and it's a little bit un uninflated. So what we end up with is we end up with a balloon, one that's nicely blown up, and this balloon has a lot of pressure blowing around, blowing up from the inside, causing the balloon to remain nice and open. Now, the second balloon is all deflated and out of shape. It doesn't have enough internal pressure to keep the balloon open. So in this first balloon, we have lots of air, and I could draw heaps of dots in here to show that the balloon had tons of air inside, which keeps the balloon nice and open. So the balloon has a density. It has a firmness when it's blown up. But this second balloon, it doesn't have the density available. It doesn't have the air inside to keep the balloon open. So whenever anything presses on this balloon from the outside, the balloon just crumples in, in shape. It can't hold, hold its shape open. It can't hold that resilience. It doesn't have the right amount of energy on the inside. Okay. Now, this second balloon, the one that's deflated, is a lot like what happens to modern people and a lot of people in the modern world. This happens, and you can imagine if I had a nice blown up balloon, the idea was to have the glove doing this for me, but the glove just ripped apart. It was too old, right? So if I blown up a balloon and like humans we should blow up into a complete adult shape by the time we're an adult if the inside air inside us or the chi inside us doesn't grow and develop as large as it should then we too are a little bit deflated on the inside and this means that things when they come from the outside we don't have the resilience to really deal with them we don't have the amount of chi in our body to allow us to physically, mentally, and emotionally, and spiritually deal with these aspects. We don't have the energy to spend on them. Now, as an acupuncturist, when I'm in clinic and I'm treating people each week, I can have someone come in one week and you know they've come in and let's just say their energy's low. That's just one of the things that they want. They're like, my energy's really low. And I'm like, great, okay, let me give you a treatment. And I, and I give them a treatment and they go away and they feel amazing, right? And then I see them the next week and I'm like, great, how, how, did, how did you go? And they go, oh, you know, treatment didn't work. I was like, oh, okay, that's no good. Why? Well, can you tell me what happened? They go, well, I got home and I washed the dog, washed the car, vacuumed the floors, mopped the, mopped the kitchen, cleaned the fridge, went for a walk with my partner, took the kids to the park. And yeah, woke up the next day and I was, I was, I was so tired. And I'm like, sounds like the treatment worked too good. Sounds like you got way too much energy and then you just used all of it. And so in Chinese medicine, we need to understand that we need to hold back a little bit of our energy so we can create more. And this is the idea of what we want to do within our system. How do we create more energy to inflate this balloon? How do we create this openness and the space in our body that allows this energy to be created? Because the Chinese believe that physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energies are the same thing. Our physical body is our mind. Our mind is our physical body. And quite often we're like, oh, if I just do mental things, you know, and, and learn mental resilience and mental things, this is going to help me. However, 
Who's ever known that they that they should respond to a certain thing a certain way to save their energies, but it just depletes them anyway? Because there's something more than just knowing how to respond. You may even, may even know how to respond, but not quite respond the way that you wanted to because you don't have the energy to fuel that response, to fuel that resilience. And so the Chinese would say that this would come from a deficient state where we don't have the energy within us to build the proper response, to feed our nervous system, to deal with offering a correct response. And so instead, we just crumple and it takes a little bit more away from us. And it's like we open up the end of the balloon and let out a bit more air, right? And the balloon goes down slightly, and the balloon goes down slightly, the balloon goes down slightly until empaths or energy workers end up as this balloon. deflated everything in life even the smallest little things that would have never been a problem just end up being a major situation the balloon just almost gets popped on so we need to learn how to build our balloon we need to learn how to inflate ourselves from the inside and qigong can help us do this by changing the way our physical body works and by changing the physical alignment by working with our posture our breath and our mind and reinfusing these together we can begin to change the way our body builds energy and start to work under a correct cycle called jing qi shen so let's dive in and take a little quick look at some of the chinese stuff now a quick little segue is we're going to do the practice a little bit later on because when I was doing this, I'm like, this was meant to be an ebook and have all this information in there. So I'm going to go through a whole heap of information first, then we'll do some practices shortly. Is that okay with everyone? Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, nice, nice. Okay. So we have three balloons inside us. They're not really balloons, they're called Dantian. Now, Dan. Tian, two words. Dan means elixir. And what's an elixir? It's like an essence, right? It's like a it's like a refined, purified substance, an elixir. And Tian means I always write it the wrong way. I'm like, is it I before E? Feel, that's right. Yes, it looks right. That's okay. Always get those two confused. I before E except after C, except for all those other examples where that doesn't where that doesn't happen, right? Exactly. English language. Awesome stuff. Right? So field. So what we're talking about here is an elixir field. And we can think about this field as being a geometry or a force field. And this is what a Dantian is. The Dantian is, and I'll draw it as a diamond. It's a force field of physiology, of our physical body. And we have three Dantian in our body. Three Dantian. Okay. We have an upper Dantian, which kind of goes from the pit of our throat to the crown of our head. We have a middle Dantian that goes from our neck down to about halfway up our belly. And then we have a lower Dantian from the lower part of our belly right down to the bottom of our pelvis. And these form three Dantian. Now, these three Dantian are elixir fields. They, re they build and refine substance or chi in the body. Now, the first one down the bottom refines a substance we call jing. Jing can be thought of as your DNA. Now, it's a little bit more than that in Chinese medicine, but DNA is a nice way to think about it because it carries our blueprint. It's everything that the human being is. It's our blueprint. Secondly, the middle Dantian builds qi. Now, qi that we're talking about here is actually the physical meat suit, the physical part of our body. Our cellular matrix at this point is our chi, okay? Where energy and physical matter are infused together. This is our cellular matrix. And then at the top, we have a substance called shen. 
Shen is our consciousness. Shen is our mind and our and our connection to heaven and everything greater. And this Jing Chi Shen is a cycle. It's a natural cycle that happens in life. And what we're looking to do naturally, healthily, is build our Jing. The Jing gets bigger and then it refines into Qi. The Qi then builds. Oh, I'm going to use green for Qi. The Qi then builds from the Jing. A physical body gets stronger and then it refines. And then the last Dantian at the top builds Shen, builds our consciousness, and then refines it. Now, two things happen at this point. That refined Shen goes out into the universe or into Wuji, into the emptiness of nature, taking our, taking our spirit and our mind and our vision and our purpose with it. But the other thing that happens is this cycle now reverses. And the Shen, now that we're smarter, and have more shen, it refines and builds the chi. The chi then refines and piles up and becomes jing. And we end up with a lot more jing after it refines and gets stored. Now, this jing is said to be like a rare essence. And when this jing is gone, there is no more blueprint to offer ourselves, to offer our chi. And with no more chi, there's nothing more for our shen to hold on to. And so it escapes. And so once our jing, our blueprint is all spent and we don't have any more blueprint left, we end up not existing any longer. Natural death would happen. And so from a Chinese perspective, what we're trying to do is learn how to build up our jing, to build up and refine our qi, and to build up and refine our shen. Now, the interesting thing about this is that these dantian could be balloons. And the energy, the jing, the qi, and the shen that's building up and refining inside these dantian is just like the air inside the balloons. And when these Dantian don't have the energy, the density, the amount, quality, and quantity of either Jing, Qi, or Shen in either the lower Dantian, the middle Dantian, or the upper Dantian, these physical areas begin to collapse. And we start to see our body acting like the empty balloon. Now, of course, I'm exaggerating the effects by crumpling my body up, but we're talking about this happening on a physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual level. So what we're actually trying to do in Qigong is build these Dantian and build the substances. Because when we talk about the field, the force field, we are talking about the size of the physical geometry of our body of the physical shape that our body grows into now the problem with life and when we're like this second balloon is that our dantian can often be bent right out of shape Now, remember, this is not only physically, this could be emotionally or spiritually. And the amount of tension that gets held in different areas of the Dantian or in the walls can actually relate to different symptoms or different disease states happening because the body is taking on different shapes. Now, in the challenge that I run, in the five-day Qigong challenge, I talk a lot more about this, and I go into a science called mechanotransduction, which is a really interesting science where they've actually found that the stress and strain, the physical forces that your gross body places on a single cell can change the way that that cell will express its DNA. And so if you're 
can segregate, if your body is out of shape, physically, mentally, or emotionally, putting different levels of tension onto your Dantian system, your ability to build, refine, and store Jing Chi Shen is going to become compromised. When this happens, we start to deflate. So part of what we want to do is start to build this frame. Now, the frame is the idea of the Dantian, about how we actually build these Dantian to be the most open, the most complete shape that they possibly can be. And in our modern lifestyle, when we sit down a lot and we spend a lot of time um, not moving, our Dantian actually begin to suffer. Now, I don't know if many of you take as much notice of people as I do, especially kids and the shapes of their bodies and the way that they walk and move. And we can see a large demographic of children now starting to actually shrink in. My son, my, my son's now 22, love him, but he actually stands with his knees slightly, I'll have to step back a little bit so you can see, slightly buckled in a little bit because his Dantian here isn't actually big enough and well enough formed to open his legs up. So when he stands there, he'll be just standing slightly smaller here, slightly sunken, rounded in the shoulders. A lot of people now have necks jutted forward and these different things, and they all change the way that our Dantian refine these substances. Now, this relates to empaths and energy workers because we use this energy in our meridian system and with our organs. This energy then goes out into the rest of the body and becomes energy that works with the heart, that works with the lungs, that works with the spleen and stomach, liver, kidneys, and the rest of the internal organs. And depending on how hard those internal organs have to function to keep up with demand is how quickly we start to use these essences within our Dantian. And as we begin to use these essences in our Dantian, our balloon begins to deflate. Okay. So who wants to try a little drill? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Now, now you can probably do this seated down, but if you could stand up, I think it'd be even better. Nice. Nice. Now, just for a start, what I want you to do is take on what's called a Wonder Woman or a Superman pose. Feet are just shoulder width apart. Hands are on your hips. Push your hips forward. Pick your chest up. Stand up like you're Superman. Now we're going to stand like this for a couple of minutes. So you can slightly move, right? But I want you to imagine like you're on stage like Superman or Wonder Woman getting a medal from the president or something, right? And you've got to have your you've got to have your chest built up for a while, right? And just nice big deep breaths and Try not to have like, oh, I yeah, oh, just stand here like <clears throat> nice, straight and tall. Take nice, dig, big, deep, powerful breaths. And I want you to watch your physiology shift. Now, I know it's been a long day for some of us here, but just standing here, even like this for a couple of minutes, has been shown through research to actually change the hormonal system, to actually change your hormonal profile in your body. To This one in particular it actually builds confidence. It decreases cortisol in your system, stress hormone. And for men anyway, it builds testosterone, right? Quite significantly, just by physically standing there and taking on this state. So notice as you stand there, you're taking on a state, okay? Just by standing there and breathing, it's not like you can stand there and kind of go, hmm. Right, there's something when you stand there. Does everyone can everyone feel that? Does everyone kind of feel just a little bit more like oh, a little bit stronger at the moment? No, no, there's a couple of people like I don't want to move. This actually feels really good. I'm going to stay here for the rest of the night. Okay. But if you can feel that state in your body, like I've actually just got quite a bit hotter. I've started to flush because my body is starting to relax in that posture. I'm getting more oxygen. My cortisol is going down and I'm starting to build up. Yeah, a million times stronger just by simply standing there in a simple posture. And this is what our Dantian can do. 
just by the way we are inhabiting our body and the state that we're holding in our body actually changes our hormonal system. And so if our Dan Tien doesn't have the energy to hold us open from the inside and increase this internal pressure, then we're naturally going to not have the energy to hold us open in the state that energizes our body. And so this is one of the things that Qigong can really do for us. So as we're standing there, up in our, up in our Superman poses, okay, I want you just to start focusing on the breath. Man, just relax your hands down by your sides now. Good, good. I want you to click your tongue to the upper roof of your mouth. Good. Just like you're going to go, but the tongue just pockets and stays up on the roof of your mouth. Your teeth are closed behind closed lips, which means you're now breathing in and out through your nose. And we're going to imagine that we're raising up through the crown of our head, getting pulled up by a string. Someone's put a fishing hook in our head. They're holding thing up. But at the same time, we're going to release our spine and let our weight just hang down into our feet. Get nice and heavy. Now, we're going to use what I like to call balloon breathing. We're going to start inflating the inside of our body. So as you stand there, I want you to take nice big deep breaths and just slowly feel your arms begin to inflate. Now, just like a balloon, if I blow into a balloon, I want the balloon to stay at its inflated state. But the skin is resting on the amount of inflation. And then I blow it up and the balloon rests on the inflation. I blow it up and it rests on the inflation. It doesn't blow up and go down and blow up and go down. So as we breathe in, we want to just breathe our hands up to just in front of our body here. You can see if I turn to the side that my hands are in front of my body. They're not beside my legs. And I've released my weight into the ground. I've got nice suspension through my spine. My tongue's on the upper palate. Now imagine that your tongue, as it pushes up, lifts your spine. But at the same time, drop all your weight down through your legs. We're standing in this position. And all we want to do here for the next few minutes is actually breathe and be that balloon and inflate our whole body. You may like to imagine like every single pore on your body is inflating. It's breathing in. It's drawing in energy. And every breath out, you may just like to soften and just sit down a little bit. Just begin to sit into your legs a little bit more. We want to ground, ground our energy into the earth. Good. Now, as you stand there and breathe, I'm going to tell a little story. I like to tell stories. I do it quite a bit. So one of the things that's really important in Chinese medicine is grounding. And in the West, I've noticed that we use this term grounding quite a lot. But quite often, it just has psychological significance and say, oh, that's a grounded person. But we miss out on what the physical body should be doing. So as you're standing here, I want you to ground by letting your energy sink into the earth through your feet. Now. It's the human being. And he's standing there. Above him is heaven. And I'm going to draw the sun for heaven because it's a big yang, big ball of heat. And down below, we're standing on earth. So above us, we have heaven. And down below, we have the earth. Now, the holographic universe, everything is within everything. So we can actually view ourselves as a human as one giant, Tensegrity. We've got three Dantian, but we can imagine ourselves as one. We actually want our Dantian to be lifting up. And at the same time, we want our Dantian 
to be grounding that energy into the earth. We're going to talk about the width in a moment, but this raising and lowering is actually causing this triangle. It's causing our Dantian to remain open and suspended so it doesn't collapse in on itself. We're using the internal pressure that our body can create through the breath, excuse me, to raise and open our posture vertically. Now, why this is super important for empaths and energy workers is not only because, as we all know, grounding is just like super important. However, in a lot of other meditation systems, what they ask us to do is cross our legs and sit down. Now, the whole reason for crossing our legs and sitting down is actually designed to try and cut the energy off from grounding so that all our energy now will spiral up towards heaven. And we're told a beautiful little story, a beautiful little lie in our culture. I call it the ladder. And it's like when we're born, people are like, you've got to climb to heaven. You've got to be a good person. You've got to do God's work and find the thing that you always want to do for the rest of your life. Climb that ladder. And it's like society sitting there like a, like a torture master or something like whipping you, like climb that ladder. And so you start to climb the ladder, right? And as you climb up, you go, oh, this is great. You know, I'm getting all these amazing things happening in my life. But then a rung, broke on the, a rung breaks on the ladder. And what do you do? That could be a trauma. It could be a major serious event in our life. And what happens then? Like snakes and ladder, you end up in the ground again. And you're there and you find yourself on a heap on the ground. And you're like, oh, I can't do it again. Society's like, climb, climb. So we start climbing the ladder again and we get up only so far before a rung breaks and we slide back down. We crumbled heap on the ground again. How did I get here? I don't want to be here. I don't like this. I just want to climb to heaven. Why am I here? Great. Climb, climb. And we stay on this merry-go-round of just climbing and falling down. Now, the reason I bring this up, because it's a little bit of an abstract point, is it's the shaman's duty to actually take us into the underworld after a serious major event of our life has happened. And we're meant to collect part of our soul, part of our person, part of our character. And then once we've done that down in hell, we can actually climb up the ladder because we finally have our purpose. We have ourselves. We found that missing part of ourselves. Now, the reason I say this is because in Qigong, we are trying to get a balance between earthing our energy at all times and sinking our energy into the earth. So we are rooted to that passion, to connecting to that part of ourselves, while at the same time, allowing our energy to rise. So as we stand there in our posture, I know you've been standing there for a little while, so well done if you've been standing there that whole time. As you breathe in, you're creating that vertical raise and grounding your energy. Now, the Chinese also have a saying. People are like muddy puddles. And if you leave a muddy puddle alone in stillness, the mud will settle to the bottom and the clear water, the clear yang will rise to the top. This is what we want to do in our qigong. And a wise woman who once came along to one of my courses turned around and said to me in the middle of a Qigong session, the earth likes shit. Oh, sorry, the earth likes manure. So give it your shit. And so what we're doing here when we're meditating in our Qigong posture is we are dropping all the debris into the earth. We are learning to ground that heavy, chunky, emotional debris that sits in our body. We're allowing our tensegrity, our physical body and all the tension that builds up in our dantian to drop into the ground good so who's who's been inflating themselves there for that time i can see nina's been doing it the whole time it's a couple of cameras off now stand there good 
Good. Okay, so I just want you to bring your hands in. And as you bring them in, just feel if there's like a density between your hands. And if there is, I want you to squeeze that density in. Squeeze it in down into your lower tummy. And just rest for a moment. Good. You might like to push up through your legs. And just give your legs a little bit of a shake out there for me. Good. If your legs are a little bit lower, they probably got quite a considerable amount of work there. Did anyone find their legs worked quite a bit for them then? Guys in the replay, right? In the chat box below. Yeah, my legs worked, right? Yeah, they did because we're learning to actually ground all the debris and all the stuff that gets filled up inside our body. We're learning to actually send it down into the ground. So the clear essences that we are, our clear shen and the clear consciousness of our mind can actually rise up to the top of our head. Now, this sets us up for this system to begin working. If the open tensegrity isn't created in the body, this system doesn't function as efficiently as it should. Great. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to look at, I keep flipping my chart the wrong way. That's awesome. Love me for who I am. I sometimes make mistakes. I'm human right, is we want to create the width now through our tensegrity and this wide state from our body, okay? So the tensegrity system and our Dantian can grow wide. And you might remember, I was just talking about a lot of young kids these days who are starting to find they're starting to thin down and they're starting to waddle a little bit, okay? So we're standing there again, standing up. That's it, guys. Now, tongue clicks to the roof of the mouth. We create that nice vertical lift through our crown. We stack our spine straight down. We let our disc open up so we begin to hang. Release your legs down a little bit. You can keep your hands cupped on your tummy. But what I want to talk about right now is the hips. Now, this, this relates to the shoulders as well, but super important with the hips is I want you to open up into what I call wide gate core strength. So sit right into your hips. Now I'm going to turn my back to you. I'm going to show you my bum for a moment. Don't mind me. The upper muscles in our glutes here get really tight and they will pull into the body. So we actually want to open up the top of our glutes and relax the top of our bum and sit wide into our hips to allow this area to begin to open. Now what this does is it allows our physical body and the shape and the geometry of our physical body to track its weight through the physical body and through the legs into the ground so that that whole tensegrity and the tension that's held within our body gets earthed. It allows us to drop the manure, drop our shit into the ground. So open up now. Try and feel down through your legs, down through the center of your bones. And we want to try and get it so that the weight of our body is centered over the front of the heel. So you can see I've come to the back of the arch of my foot, just in front of the heel, straight down the midline of the length of the foot, right at the back of the arch, just in front of the heel. Sinking our weight into that point, letting the knees bend and letting the body open as we sit into our bum. Now, as you sit there, I want you to try and make your body like, I like to call it like a clear conduit. As if all the body is aligned and it's letting all your weight, your mass of your body track through, open up and go down through each bone into the leg. Now, the reason the Chinese call Qigong horse riding stance is because there's a horse in between your knees. And if there was something in between my knees, like a horse, I couldn't pull my knees in because, of course, there's a horse there, right? So I've got to have my knees nice and open as I sit in and sit down my bum and let my weight sit in. Now, I've got that grounding happen. I've got the lift, but I've also opened my pelvis up to be nice and wide. Can everyone feel that width in through their hip and in through their pelvis as they sit down? Good. 
Now, it's really common that a lot of people will clamp that up around their spine and we want to release that and open it. Now, what is this doing for us? Good, just stand there for a little bit if you can. I keep coming back and forward from the, from the board. Is for empaths and energy workers to create the energy inside our body, we need to have our body nice and open and we need to be using the breath to fill these dantian with the energy that we need to open our dantian and refine them. You may like to think of the width of this as being where our hip bones might be. I kind of drew my hip bone around the wrong way, but that's all right. Our hip bone going into the side of our pelvis here so it can open up nice and wide. So we can ground our energy into the earth clean our body of all that debris that, that, that gets caught up in our body through all the stuff that we get in contact with every day. And so our upper energy that is rising can become super clean and remain clean. Okay, nice. So we're standing there. Now we want to keep our tensegrity nice and open. We want to keep these dantian nice and open. Okay. So let's do a couple little exercises now to help us fill these Dantian spaces, okay? So just relaxing with your arms nice and low. Now, I want you to keep your tongue pressed up against the roof of your mouth. I want you to keep your energy nice and hung so it's sinking into the ground through your legs. Try and feel into your spine as if your spine is nice and straight and use that balloon breath to Feel every crevice of your body, every cell in your body is being aerated. It's being infused with oxygen. It's expanding in all directions and just softening off, getting nice and relaxed. Good. So the human body within this Dantian system acts like a pump. And we quite literally get our body to pump energy through. Now, this can be useful when we want to fill our body. It also becomes super important when we want to pack energy into the body. So we're going to learn about filling up our lower Dantian to begin with. Now, we're going to imagine there is a barrel, a barrel of water here in front of us. And we're going to reach forward. We're going to rub our little finger side of our hand around the inside rim of that barrel. We're going to let our fingers take over on the inside rim of the barrel as they roll. And then we're going to pull all the energy we've collected in and down as if we're packing it into the body, but at the same time, down, packing it into the pelvic bowl. And we rub around the barrel, breath in, grabbing on, we're pulling back rolling that energy over and sinking it down into our lower Dantian. And this becomes a repetitive drill. Nice. Breath out, squeezing that energy back in, rolling it down. Now, breath in, hands come forward. Breath out, pulling back, packing into the body. Nice. Good. Now this Qigong is called Open the Choir and it's actually all about, as I just said, packing energy into our lower Dantian. And so what I want you to do is if you feel energy or you feel a density or a substance between your hand and your tummy, I want you to go really slowly as you pull that in and pack it down. Now, you might like to imagine a space like an inch or two deep inside your body as you do this. So you've got your mind focusing on a point deep inside your body as you breathe in and pull that energy into your body and pack it down. Now, as we do that, of course, we've got to keep this nice wide open pelvis. We want to be nice and grounded and sunk. We want our energy sinking to the ground. We want the breath inflating us and lifting up our spine, making us nice and straight. And standing in that 
correct posture. And just as the posture that we stood in for our Superman pose changed our physiology, the Qigong physiology is like a neutral point. It allows us to build our body just as it was intended. Bring us back into neutral, a place where we can recharge, a place where the tensegrity, the shape of the body is all in its neutral shape, where it can build energy just as it was designed to do. Good. Now we're going to go around once more. And this time we're going to pull our hands in and we're going to bring them in to stop just in front of our body. Good. Just in front of our body. I like to call this the starting position. Good. Good. Nice. We're going to do a Qigong now called preparation. And with preparation, we're going to imagine like our hands are suction cups. And we're going to suck energy up from the ground. And then we're going to push that energy down into the ground. Good. Now, as I said, we're like a chi pump. So as we do this, you might like to think of that energy being drawn up, sucked up into the body, sucked up through the feet into the hands, and then pressing that energy down. Good. So as an empath or an energy worker, we can pull fresh energy up into our body, through our feet, through kidney one, acupuncture point at the bottom of our foot, and then we can press it back down into the ground to help us anchor, to help us ground that energy, to help clean and purify it. We breathe in. Nice. Up. And breath out. And press down. Good. This is a very simple Qigong. It's designed to take the energy, draw it up through our legs, up into our body, and then pack down all that that does not serve us. And so we can actually use our mind to infuse the energy that we're drawing up, pulling clean, refined earth energy into our body, and then pushing down. You might like to think as you push down, that your hands are squeezing energy down through your body into the ground through your feet, emptying it out. And as you do that, we'll try and let your feet become completely empty in your legs. What look for any tension and release that tension in your legs and let your mass, let your weight sink down into the ground. The Chinese believe that we grew roots out of our legs into the earth as we ground and do this practice. And the larger those roots are, the more energy we can draw from, from the earth. So spending our time in our Qigong posture and learning to earth and ground our body, ground our energy and let our mass work through our tensegrity, work through our Dantian and, the, and become aligned and sink into the ground, can actually allow ourselves to draw energy into the body and then press it down into the earth. Good. Let's do one more with a bit of sound effect. So we're roaring up through our body, through our feet, right up into our upper body. And now we're squeezing, squeezing all that energy down into the ground as our weight sinks through into the earth. Good. Just having a little rest with our hands on the side now. Feel into the ground. Imagine your hands, the center of your hand, acupuncture point here, La Gung, pericardium eight, is feeling into the earth, anchoring your energy into the ground. Good. Okay. We're going to do one last Qigong tonight. Oh, it's really warm in here tonight. And we're going to look at a Qigong called Close the Qua. Okay. So we're going to breathe in. We're going to let our hands roll over till like they're resting on the bottom of a big gym ball. There's a big circle here. They're resting on the bottom. We breathe in. The hands raise, keeping your shoulders super relaxed. And we press down. 
pushing that energy into the ground just like we did a moment ago. So empty your feet, empty your legs, open up, feel the tracking through your legs. Make sure it feels like it's going right through the bones into the ground. Letting your hands roll at the bottom. Big breath in. And now we want to collect all the energy that we've created. And we want to push it down into the ground. That's it, squeezing it down into the ground. Nice. And with a breath in, rolling our hands up and over. Good. Now imagine if you were standing somewhere like a river, park in your backyard, you can imagine like you're drawing in the essence of the water. You're drawing in the essence of the clouds, of the sun, the mountain. And now you're packing that into your body. Somatically drawing in that energy, using the drawing of the yin energy of the breath in to draw in and suction the beauty, the essence of nature into our body collecting it for ourselves and squishing it down into the body. And it's this way that the Chinese ancients were said to draw essence from nature, to fill their energy, to fill their body. And so here you can draw in any sort of energy you want. and press it down, squeezing it down into your body, releasing anything that you no longer need through your feet into the earth. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna push down like we're pushing onto a table, standing up through our legs. That's it, standing up nice and tall. You might like to just cup your hands on your tummy as you have a little shift of your weight left and right. It can actually be kind of taxing on the, on the legs there. And on the feet, you may have already felt that. Generally, that's because our legs are not used to feeling our mass completely sink into the ground through them. We're used to moving regularly or using tension to kind of hold ourselves up so our weight isn't sinking through. But as soon as we release that, yeah, our feet and our bodies can actually get a little bit sore from that amount of weight. So if that's happened for you, just realize that that is actually quite normal. And that's actually part of the body strengthening. Good. So... The body strengthening is a really important aspect to realize of what we're actually trying to do here. So with our Dantian, as I've drawn earlier, what we really want to do is allow our body to open up into that height and the width so that these Dantian can stop being so deformed and losing shape. So they can actually open up into their most complete shape and build the energy they want. Is that Does that make sense? Is that kind of clear? Team, yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, couple of hands, couple of nods, a bit of a smile. That's good, that's good. All right, all right. I'm just curious, does anyone, while, while you've got me, have any questions they would like to ask? You can either type them or you can uh, turn on your microphone and quickly call them out, call them out if you do. No, no questions, no questions. When can I train with you on the Gold Coast? I don't know, Gemma, when, when are you around this way next? Shoot me an inbox. We, we can talk about that. We can make that a thing if you want. Um, do that, you transmute when... energy? Sorry, you might need to turn your microphone on and ask that one. I, I missed it. I can't see all the questions. They don't stay up on my screen long enough that I can see. Can you um, transmute energy? Nope. No one's they're not going to ask it. Can you transmute energy into the body? Yes. Yes. Was that the question someone asked? Right. So, yeah, and that's kind of what we were just doing here, right, is we're actually learning to grab, to build the energy. Now, this works in two ways because we need to realize that Whilst energy exists all around us, 
that the energy that we are building is by growing our body and by strengthening our body. So another way to think of these balloons can be, let me just flip over for a moment. Uh, it's a topic I call white bread. Okay. So if we have a piece of white bread, you buy from the bakery, and that's, that's a piece of white bread, okay? You can expect to have a little bit of nutrition in that white bread, okay? There's not that much goodness in it. Whereas we, well, this piece of bread looks way gnarlier. It's really dense. It's got huge bits of grain. It's got oats. It's got rye in there. You know, when you pick it up, you feel like if you swung it at someone's head, you could knock them out. Like this bread is dense. It is full. It is like past whole meal. It is full of nourishment. It is full of, you know, whole grains and nutrition. Essentially, we want to grow our body to be as open and as nutritionally dense. And this is the idea of growing the Dantian, is we actually need our body to strengthen. We can't just build energy by magically waving our hands around and expecting energy to come into our body, okay? We actually need to be able to grade and increase the intensity of that movement. And so the thing we need to do is learn to move within the tensegrity, within the frame of our body. And what this allows us to do is put pressure and stress and strain through the correct angles and geometries of the body to build up the frame or the dantian of the body so they get thicker and stronger, okay? As they do that, they get more dense. There is more nutrition. There is more ability for the body to make energy. So we can't just simply sit there and expect our bodies to get stronger. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean as well like the Western concept of muscular strength. It's not necessarily what we're talking about here. There will be a level of natural muscular strength, but we're talking about everything that goes into getting the body to work within its very natural state. Now, within that natural state, when we're doing our qigong, we should be doing movements that are allowing our body to go through a range of motion. And as we build it up, it should get more dense. I'm not explaining this particularly well, so we need to do it as an exercise. Guys, you can sit down, you can stand up. But let's do a little exercise together to understand how this works. So if you're going to stand up with me, your tongue should go on your upper palate, you should get your spine nice and straight, breathe in to create that length, sink down, let your body sink, let your pelvis lightly tuck under. And we're going to come into a Qigong called Tiger Paw Palm, Okay. Now, the idea of tiger paw palm as a qigong is it actually makes your bones dense and increases your immunity, okay? But let's see what we can feel because it's a very interesting feeling qigong. Now, we're going to breathe our hands up to the sides and roll our hands around and we're going to press our hands in together. Now, we're going to release our hands and let them open up. And you'll see that my hands are opening up going yin, relaxing. And then they're pressing together. Now, your hand should stay in front of your chest like this. I'm going to do it down here just because you can see what my hands are doing a little bit easier. They're going yin and bending. And then they're coming in almost like I'm going to clap. They come in. And then they open. And then they come in. Now, I want you to breathe in. And again, suction in energy into your body. And now press your hands in. Now, what I want you to do with your imagination, okay, or your feeling, is imagine there's a balloon in between your hands. And as you breathe it in, the balloon gets denser. It becomes a bit more like the whole grain bread. And then as you squeeze it in, you can feel it's denser. It's maybe harder to squeeze in. And then you breathe in again and the hands open up again. The balloon's inflating. It's getting denser. And then you're squeezing that balloon end to end. And you may find it gets denser again. And we breathe in to fill up the density inside the balloon. 
And then we're trying to push that balloon end to end. And you might feel an energy in between your hands now that's getting denser, that's getting firmer. And we breathe in. And you may even start to find your hands don't want to move as far, especially if you rest your mind right on the edge of that movement. As you do this tiger paw palm qigong, that area in between your hands gets denser and firmer. Now, keep going, keep going. You probably also feel like a density in your hands, almost like you can't just move your hands. Like, I mean, you can, but it feels like it's like, oh, they're stuck in a track. They're stuck in a particular track of movement when I do that. It doesn't feel like they want to move outside that track. They just feel as if they want to squeeze the breath out and open with the breath in. Good. You may start to feel your shoulders starting to get a little bit sore, right? They're doing a little bit of work and you're like, oh my God, how long is Nick going to keep going? Like, are we done yet? This is tricky. This is all part of what I'll explain next. Good. So let's press our hands all the way in. You may like to feel that density build, build more, build even more, build even more, build even more, squeeze it in, rub your hands. We may as well finish this qigong off nicely. Rub your hands so they get super nice and warm. We're going to bring them up to our eyes with a breath in. Big breath in and then over the back of your head. We're going to bring it down to our shoulders and then we're just going to let our hands flow. Good. Good. Who felt their hands build up that density? Nice. Who felt their hands like they were sitting in tracks and they couldn't move out of those kind of tracks? Felt like they were sitting there, yeah? Good. That's the tensegrity. That's the alignment that we want to build up for our Dantian to grow. Who felt the energy in between their hands? Yeah? Good. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. It's going to be an interesting one. Is there really energy or chi between your hands? Or is this, a, is this a, an effect that you can feel because your body is sitting in a correct tensegrity? And is working. So is it just a feeling that the body produces when the body is working within its correct tensegrity, when the musculoskeletal system is all aligned and working as one single entity? Does it build up a field, a frame, an energy? So whether you believe in energy or not, that don't worry about it. Just imagine for a moment energy doesn't exist and it's literally as if we're building up that Dantian. We're building up the elixir field, the field, the geometry within our body that causes that squeezing and that sensation. Now, that sensation, whether it be chi or not, is beside the point because what that is actually doing is it's allowing the Dantian to grow open. That force field is allowing our body to develop correctly in the aligned tracks that it was designed for. And when we can sit in those tensegrities and breathe and allow the qigong, the qi work to occur, this allows our dantian to open and he's going to produce more jing, qi and shen, which gives our organs more energy to use for the jobs that they do during the day. Any other job that they do. Now, as far as being an empath or an energy worker, Learning to sit and move within these tensegrities and build this tensegrity up is a way that we can actually get our body to become the inflated balloon. It actually allows us to build energy. Can you imagine if you were doing this on the daily and you built it to where it was like, oh, I can hardly even squeeze that now. Like there's just so much energy. You have actually built the physical musculature of your body that allows you to build that tensegrity. This tensegrity or this frame allows your Dantian to grow because it's in the natural pressures that open your body. Does that make sense? Yeah? 
Now, I've seen a heap of questions come in. I'll, I might get to those in a moment because um, I think there was a couple of really good ones. Um, yeah, I'm doing the thing where I go the wrong way on my flippy again. That's awesome. Um, okay, guys, should I go to my computer and bring up the quest the questions so I can see what people have asked me or do people want to open it up and read them out to me? Nope, okay. Ah. Let me come down here. Oh. Okay, that box is very small. I can't read that. Okay. Is there a time of day that is best to do this practice? Yes. It's all day, any day. Any time of the day is the best time to do this, Jenny, for sure, right? Any time. Dawn and dusk are kind of like the times, kind of halfway between yin and yang, that classically people would practice this. So that, that that's a thing, dawn and dusk. But in our modern lifestyle, and with a lot of the students I do in my level one and my level two programs, I have what are called kettle drills. A kettle drill is when you press go on the kettle and you've got four or five minutes and you're standing there, you're like, oh, I'm going to scroll or I'm going to, I'm going to, right? No, nah, you don't scroll. You don't search the fridge for that elusive chocolate bar that you can't seem to find that you're not sure if you ate a couple of days ago or not, right? You do some chiggle. And really, it's just rehitting our body with that, just getting into a nice posture, just standing there for a few minutes in a different qigong posture to get your body to align. That's the best time to do it, when you have available time. Yeah, just little snippets through the day. And the more you return your body to a neutral tensegrity, to a relaxed state where it's being inflated, the more your body is going to stay in that state, the more you're going to end up aligning your body with being that inflated balloon and not the little crumpled balloon. Does that make sense, Jenny? She's giving me a couple of thumbs up. She's onto it. She's onto it. Okay. Oh, Terry Ann. Hello, Terry Ann. She asked me, how long do you recommend for a daily Qigong session? I think bare minimum, you'd want to look at 15 to 20 minutes. Bare minimum. Yeah, 15 to 20 minutes, longer if you had the time. But 15 or 20 minutes is a nice time if you're if you're going to have a concerted practice. And let's just say, just to add on to Jenny's question, if it's like, oh, you know, I, I get time at I get time before the kids wake up or before I go to work or whatever it is. Great. 20 minutes on the clock and do your training. Now, there's something I also tell my level one, level two students with that. If you do have a designated time to train, Set a timer, and for that time, it doesn't matter what else happens in the world. One of the hardest things in the world about Qigong is doing Qigong. Once you're there, it's not a problem. It feels great. You love it, right? But most of the time, like any other exercise, you're like, oh, really? Really? Can't I just eat chocolate, drink beer or something? Like, can't I? Just, oh, okay, but you can't. So... If you're going to do your practice, set a time like 20 minutes and then don't run away. Don't rush. You'll be like, oh, I've got 20 minutes. It's not going to get you there any faster, right? If you speed up, it's not going to get you there any faster. You're better off doing one of these for 20 minutes than you are doing heaps really fast and not actually getting the practice, not actually getting the slow down. And so if you do have a practice, and, and I, I treat I do this when I'm in my car. When I'm in my car, it's my time. There's only so fast I can go. From where I left to where I'm going, it's going to take X amount of time. There's nothing else I can do. It, I can't rush. You know, I can't distract myself by scrolling. It's my time. So this is where I breathe. This is where I put myself into a meditative state. This is where I practice um, all the sorts of little weird uh, exercises I do, my, you know, my not Kegel for guys, but you know, my uh, my my um, pelvic floor and my breathing exercises and tongue exercises, all sorts of different things that I do while I'm driving because I'm captive for that time. So put your 20 minutes on your timer and don't speed up. Don't let yourself get distracted. Just do your qigong nice and slowly 
in that time. And whether that be five, 10 or 15 minutes, if you're putting yourself into the state and practicing staying in that state for longer and longer periods of time, you're going to be able to go, I want to be in that state, boom, and return to it. Yeah, so you spend less time out of that state. Does that make sense? Good, nice, nice. Uh, do we have another question? The energy is present in us and around us at all times. We just channeling it through our bodies so we get a much better sensation and awareness of it. Yeah, I like to think of the body as like a energy antenna. But we have to have the antenna aligned. Just like they align satellites to get the signals. Okay, you can't have a satellite not facing the right way and expecting to pick up the signal. Our body's the same. If our body is not in the right shape, it actually won't have the energy drawn to it. It won't be like that transistor. This Dantian system is the body aligning in a way that allows it to grow forward. Yeah? Does that make sense? That one? Yeah, does anyone want me to expand on that or they're all good for that one? Nice. Now, do we have any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have daily practices to help you deal with those energy vampires? Yes, I do. Just called Qigong. It is just called Qigong. Because we want to build this up. Now, I didn't touch on this. I had so many other plans for this. This hasn't gone quite as straight and as narrow as I wanted it to. Let's just admit it. But let's touch on the point of boundaries. Because that's what we're talking about when it comes to energy vampires, right? Either we don't have the boundaries or the energy vampires just plow through whatever boundaries we do have, okay? It can be one or the other. So there's no blame, no, no, no foul with this one. Okay. When we're standing within a correct tensegrity, we're standing within a correct frame. This field or this dantian, this elixir field, this force field is an energetic boundary as much as it is a physical boundary, as much as it is a spiritual boundary. I'm constantly seeing people in my Qigong classes who really stretch out and open. I say to them, do you tend to give too much to people? They're like, yeah, how can you tell? And I'm like, because you're just trying to give. Bring it back into your own geometry, into your own physical structure into your shape and not like you're trying to give out too much. And so when we sit into our tensegrity and when we sit into the correct shapes that we get within Qigong and our body strengthens into those shapes, we naturally develop firm boundaries or firmer boundaries. And as we fill up and we stop being the little deflated balloon with no energy inside us, but with energy inside us to hold those boundaries, it means that when people try and push into our boundaries, we have that spongy firmness that we were feeling in between our hands. It doesn't mean that we won't give a little bit, but it means we've got more to bounce back with, or it means that we'll hold our boundaries so that they bounce off, depending on how strong we are within our tensegrity. So this tensegrity is a field, it is a shape. And when we're talking boundaries, we're talking about that shape being broken down whether that's because we don't have the energy inside us or because someone just pushes through the boundaries or the energy that we do have. And so if it comes down to people just bursting through those boundaries, we can build them up with our Qigong. Or if it comes for us for letting people in and having those leaks, Qigong will actually help us to fill ourselves up again and actually heal ourselves by filling ourselves up with that energy again so that it hasn't leaked and been pushed out of us. Okay? Just simply standing in our qigong is the way that we can increase those boundaries and stop those energetic vampires having an attack. So like I was talking the other day in my level two class about uh, acupuncture and saying that when I first started acupuncture, you know, I'd be giving someone a treatment and I'd be holding a needle in them, breathing energy and, you know, doing, doing my chi work. And I would literally, my eyes would start to close and I'd be standing there going like, like, I just want to go to sleep, right? Because it's like they're just sucking all my chi out, right? But that's my job. That's kind of what they're paying me for, right? 
Now, I just want to open up into absolutely being clear. Have every single drop. Have every single drop of energy from me because it's my job, right? It'd be slightly different maybe if I was somewhere, it was a boss who was trying to use my energy for their own things or a, or a, or a family member or someone like that. But with a client, have everything. And when I open up to that clear, have everything, then they're drawing from the universe, not from me. And when I do go back to my table after I've given the treatment and I'm letting them rest, I just sit down and I take some quiet breaths and I fill up because my geometry is already in an open and alive and state. So I can rebuild that energy quickly. If I was the crumpled down balloon, I wouldn't be able to build that energy fast enough. But because I do my Qigong, I'm able to refill my body very, very quickly. And this is what I think I said at the start when I was in clinic and I, I was quite young and I was working in a busy clinic with quite a number of therapists. And I found that a number of those therapists would treat three, four, five people. And then they'd be like, I got to go home. I'm, I'm, I'm done for the day. I'm too tired. And I'm like, hold on for a successful acupuncture clinic. You need to treat 10, 15 people like that day, right? If you want to make, if you want to actually survive. And so if you want to have that much energy to be able to treat that many people, you actually really need to build yourself up into a really strong and powerful space and have the resilience to be able to rebuild energy really quickly. And so, I mean, that's the thing. It's not like if you're this inflated balloon that after one client, you're going to become this deflated. Okay. You're going to stay relatively inflated. You're going, to you're going to recreate that energy very quickly because your biology, the physiology of your body is open and grown into a space where you can build that energy very quickly. Neurologically, biochemical energy, the stuff that actually runs our body. That's what our chi is, right? And so when our body's in this nice open state, it actually allows us to build that energy as fast as we can use it. And so we always seem sprightly. We always seem energetic. Has anyone wondered where I get my energy from? Yeah, people are like, you still go. Like, do you stop? Do you stop? Like, why are you all so happy? Why are you glowing? Guys, literally, it's because I just do long periods of Qigong and have been doing Qigong so long that when I do use a lot of energy, and, you know, I am a giver. I love to give out. I, I'm a healer. I love to heal people. And when I present i like i love to give my all and when i'm finished yeah sometimes i'm like like i just did a five-day workshop for my level twos we went five days hard we trained and we we did healing techniques and i spoke for five days for like eight hours straight longer if you include the telephone calls um you know on my way and on the way back and the ability to regenerate that energy each day it's something I don't necessarily think about, but after working in clinics and working with a lot of people, it's Qigong and it's the ability to have this. Qigong really is the way that empaths and energy workers can work to rebuild their body, to begin inflating themselves with the energy that they need, to begin deleting the tension in their body that's pulling them out of shape, and this doesn't necessarily mean in a shape you can see. It's not like we see these hunchback em, you know, empaths and energy workers walking down the street, right? But it's about our internal geometry. It's the geometry of your cells. It's the way your weight shifts through your body. It's about the debris and the emotions that are held within your organs, within your fascial system. These are all changing your shape. And Qigong helps you to drop these out of your body so that you grow open and you grow forward. Because you might admit, right? Everyone here admit that, we can't change the past. Can we change the past, guys? Not really. All we can do is change how we're going to respond for the future. We can only ever grow forward. And so a lot of the time with, with empaths or people have got to quite a depleted energy state like, like energy workers do, and you're this second balloon and you are deflated and you don't have the energy at your reserves. I just totally lost my place. That was awesome. <laughs> right. But if you are in this state and, and you are this deflated, then basically you want to be able to rebuild all that energy up. And so 
if you just rest into your qigong posture and breathe your internal tensegrity the the tension within your organs the tension within your body is going to begin dropping out it's going to drop into the earth it's going to allow things to open up and it's going to allow this energy to be able to be recreated in your body guys i did lose my place did anyone have any questions about that no, no, I can't see this couple of messages down below. Nice, nice. All right, guys, well, we've gone for an hour and a half. So um, I might jump out of here now and let you guys go on your way. So for those of you who have watched this, thank you so much for turning up. For those of you who are here on the replay, thank you for, remember, watch hashtag replay before. Guys, um, I'll probably do this again in a little while because I'd like to re-go over some of these ideas again in a bit more of a collated way. But one of the best ways to actually jump in and go through this is to look at the five-day challenge that I run. And if you haven't looked at the five-day challenge yet, I go through a lot of this in detail and break it down and go day by day. There's new exercises every day. I go a lot deeper into the breathing mechanics. I go a lot deeper into how to use the body. And it'll be a really powerful way to jump into this training a little bit further. So if you've liked what I'm putting down and you're like, okay, I'm interested. I'd like to learn a little bit more. The easiest way is to jump into my free online five-day challenge. That way you can do it from anywhere in the world. It's completely free. And we spend five days just breaking all this down and going really deep. Now, this relates to anyone. This is just how energy is built up through our body. And so whether you're an empath or an energy healer, or whether you're just someone who's like, I just want to feel better in my life. I want my body to work better. I want these aches and pains to go away. I want better resilience. And I just want more energy in my life. Then guys, over that uh, five days in the five day free challenge, guys, I'm going to go through this really, really clearly. So if you are interested, if you jump back onto the group, the, the Chi Practice wall, you'll see there's a post up there at the moment for the challenge. You can click on that challenge and go and register or just drop me a message and I can help you through that process. Um, guys, it'd be great to see you on that challenge. I hope you guys have enjoyed this evening. Um, if you do have any further questions on this topic, please feel free to pop them under the video or in the chat or shoot a message through me or something like that. Even just ask them here on the Facebook wall. Uh, it's always a really good way. And guys, thank you so much. Thanks for all the thanks I can see coming through on the chat. Guys, absolutely awesome to spend this time with you. Thank you so very much. And team, I hope you're all in good health. Thank you.